interesting side of every, everything. Um, the images, the lighting, and all that sort of thing. And it dawned on me that that's what I wanted to do, and I wanted to become a photographer. So, the other side of the camera. I mean, how did you become a model then? <laughs> Uh, that was through a friend while I was in university. She had a um, photo shoot booked with a agency and she asked me to go along with her. So I said, yeah, that's fine. And that just snowballed them. I ended up doing that for maybe three years, four years, and working with about 150 different photographers traveling up and down the country it was it was a lot of fun oh my goodness uh, so it was something you could earn a living from from the modeling then at that stage yeah i did i did get paid for some things i um did some acting as well during that as well so it was it was exciting like um i did i did learn a lot and like I said, I was really interested in the photos where most models, they look at themselves and they're like, oh, look how good I look. But I wasn't like that. I was looking at the, the actual photos and saying, oh, look at that light. Or if I was just posing that way, or maybe if the angle was in this position, or I, you know, I could have styled myself a little bit better. And maybe if we put a colored gel behind me and I was just like, Oh, actually, I really like photography. Wow. <laughs> so that's why I just ended up picking up a camera and just starting my own journey. And I started off doing model photography because that's everything that I knew. And then I became a mum in 2011 and I started family photography. And then it, the next year when I completed my college, a diploma i um did weddings as i was planning my own wedding i started wedding photography and a bit of commercial photography then in 2013 i opened my first home studio and i just grew i just grew from there really it's really interesting when you talk about wedding photography i always take my hat off to wedding photographers and i know it's been a difficult year this past year uh, because there haven't been the weddings but i take my hat off because you've got to be really well organized to get the best shots for a wedding photographer haven't you oh absolutely absolutely especially for the group shots i mean there's different styles of photography obviously there's the documentary uh, there's the more pose there's more artistic style so everybody has their own um, style of photography but especially if you if you've got a large wedding you've got like um 250 guests or whatever and you're trying to <laughs> you're trying to pose them all and get them to look at look at the camera because you know the bride and groom want to have this really special um family pictures that, that, that can be uh, challenging. Oh, I'm sure. I think the expression could be like herding cats. I think that would be an expression you could use for that, which is virtually impossible. And I suppose you might have some situations where you've got a group photograph, and then all of a sudden you've taken it, it's taken ages, and then somebody appears that they've been off doing something else and they've missed it. But, you know, that, that that's how it goes sometimes, isn't it? Well, this is why we usually... Um get one of the family members to help out and we get a wedding list so we get the bride and the groom to write down what type of photos they want and who they want in them and then they appoint somebody to help them out uh, because obviously i don't know who all these people are and then we start off with the bigger groups and then we work through all the groups and the helper goes out and collects everybody and makes sure that we're following the little plan that we've made but not every bride and groom wants that. So each, you know, each couple is completely unique. Um, so that's why it's really important actually to make sure you have a consultation with your, your wedding photographer and you speak to them about it. In fact, I had a wedding consultation this morning actually uh, in town and she, she told me that she had lost a 500 pound deposit and she didn't actually end up signing a contract and she never met the photographer oh, which was yeah really unfortunate um so any advice i would say would be make sure that you always sign a contract read the contract fully 
and do make sure you meet your photographer because you know if you're investing in them for your special day you want to make sure that they're the right photographer for your family and you're trusting them with you know really important memories that you can't get back you know i have had so many people who have come to me and said oh yeah i had terrible wedding photos for my you know my wedding day and it, it's such a shame when yeah. people lose lose out special time is that you mentioned your children how old are your children so my daughter's just turned 10 and my son will be turning seven on the 10th oh not far to wait for the birthday mm -hmm. uh so it'll be his second birthday in lockdown in some respects won't it because it would have been locked down last year for his birthday yeah. oh bless him are they both looking yeah. forward to easter they are they are we are looking forward to watching movies all day eating our easter eggs and just relaxing and having that you know <laughs> edging out day very good i've got a little note here that says you're in the process of turning your garage into a studio yeah. so so how, how much how much pro progress have you made on that uh, not too bad actually i've managed to convert it completely get it replastered already um the other day actually i had the electrician in to do some light panels today somebody came to measure up the door and window to replace them so there is a lot of work that's going into it at the moment fantastic but You're it's also... really nice to, to have a place Oh, it'd be lovely to have that, that special space to work as well. You're also a mental health advocate as well. Um, and, you know, just, just tell I us am. a bit about that and um, why you wanted to, to be a mental health advocate. That is just from personal struggles, struggles with my family. I had, My father was bipolar. He ended his life when he was 48. Um, this was 14 years ago. So it's just something that's um, very dear to my heart and I faced a lot of stigma myself. There's still a lot of stigma going on in the world and I just want to spread um, awareness and love about it and try and encourage people to open up and be real because I think a lot of people are afraid to speak up about it and that's um it keeps people ill it, it, it makes it worse victoria lovely chatting with you on the program today i hope you have a lovely easter um, i'm looking for someone to talk to next week on the program now who would you like to nominate i would love to nominate my friend kay fletcher she is an artist also in gainsborough and she is phenomenal and she's a lovely um mum of two girls so hopefully she'll, she'll be able to do it Lovely. We'll look forward to chatting next week. Thank you ever so much, Victoria. Have a lovely Easter. Thank you. You too. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye-bye. BBC introducing...